Hello to Soka family. Welcome to this edition of To Soka, Two Sisters of a Certain Age Conversations with a Therapist and a Doctor. I'm your co-host, Dr. Sophia Grant, board certified pediatrician and board certified child abuse pediatrician. And I am your host, Judy. I am your co-host. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's early, folks. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Judy Grant, licensed marriage and family therapist. And Candy, I have to tell you my struggle yesterday. Oh gosh, what was it? You didn't call me. I know. I what know, happened? But this is such an issue for women of a certain age. So I was in Target yesterday with Maya preparing to get her back to school mm-hmm. and getting her her essentials. And we're down the feminine products aisle. Now, having had a hysterectomy years ago, I don't need any of that stuff. I'm very grateful that I don't need any of that stuff. And yet I found myself in the aisle pausing, looking at these panty liners because when I sneeze and when I cough, a little wee wee comes out. Oh, that's another episode of the podcast. We need a urogynecologist on here. Um, you know, that that stress incontinence is real, and um, especially when you've had a bunch of babies. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I've been meaning to talk about that because it is a very real problem. And um, we will talk about that on another episode. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, when I was in there in the aisle, like, what do I get? Just thinking mm-hmm. about this. And I'm explaining to Maya and I'm like, it doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen every now and then. And I think we could be embarrassed by that or mm-hmm. just put it out there and say it. And so I'm putting it out there for our audience to say, this shit's happening. Um, and it really takes you aback. And I actually had a conversation with a friend at work and she she's like, it happens to me. And so I also wanna normalize this, but I think you're right. We do need to have a whole episode about this. Right, so what does this have to do with the theme of our talk today, crying? It doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> well, because I was you just want you aisle. just wanted you just wanted to share it. Well, I did. I, today today we're going to be talking <laughs> about yeah I know from urine well it's it bodily function. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about crying, um, and you know there were a couple things that happened that made us think we need to talk about this. Um, my. Um, Mummy found an album of my godfather's um, wedding where daddy was the best man. Mm-hmm. And she gave it to me because my godfather uh, loved me and she thought I would like it. And uh, my my godfather was Dr. Irving Keen. He was a dentist, tall, handsome man. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Uncle Irving died in... Um, when I was in sixth grade, the summer after sixth grade. And um, daddy and Rupi and I, we went down to Jamaica for the the funeral. And um, my father cried, but not like kind of quiet tears. Daddy bawled, like big old bawling, guttural sounds coming out of his body. And it was the first time I saw daddy cry. And I remember thinking, wow, daddy really loved Uncle Irving. And um, it was kind of off-putting, but I thought, he was he was showing the uh, the loss that he he had for his dear friend, and of course by the time we came back from Jamaica back to California, Mummy had heard how much Daddy cried because there were people in Jamaica said your husband put down one piece of balling, and so when I was like Mummy Daddy cried so much, 
mummy knew. And, um, you know, it got me thinking about crying and men crying and what's the purpose of crying. And um, I thought it would be a good topic for today. So Judy, how many times have you cried this week? <laughs> Including yesterday at Target. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say not shedding a lot of tears, but becoming mm -hmm. teary eyed mm -hmm. probably three times. Mm -hmm. probably, and what was, what caused it? Um, I was in a meeting mm -hmm. and we were talking about, um, race relations in the United States mm -hmm. and a woman was sharing her story and I was very moved by what she had to share mm -hmm. and I was crying. Um, I watched a video, a very sweet video mm -hmm. of um, a reunion between child and parent on yeah. Instagram yeah. and I cry. Um, but those are different types of tears. There mm -hmm. was the, the sad tears and the hurt tears. And then there was like the, the, like the happy tears of this, the, the, this parent and child reuniting after, after, you know, years. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't have a problem crying. I feel that for me personally, I don't care who sees me cry. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm not trying to hide my emotions. I'm not trying to hide my feelings. I am pretty comfortable in my vulnerability and know that people aren't going to judge me if I shed a tear. But like, um, I don't, do you care if people judge you anyway? I don't care. But no, I don't care. But guess mm -hmm. who does? Men care. It's a whole other story when you talk about men crying that's true that's true and um, you know this this experience you had with daddy i'm glad you had it mm -hmm. but that's not the norm for men in western society mm -hmm. and i was um reading about this and i mean these are things that i know but, you know, Western society has told men um, that tears are weak, mm -hmm. you know, and it makes you look like a sissy, like a baby, you know, and they have all sorts of other words for it. If you cry, oh, you're crying like a girl. You know, mm -hmm. we've heard these things about men. And then for society to put that on our young men and they grow up not feeling sp uh the, the space and comfortable with their tears. And then you have men who are like, no, I never cry. Mm -hmm. And they have, there's like a sense of pride around that. And I'm thinking, right. hey, that's nothing to be proud of because think of all that you're holding in. The emotions that you're stuffing away. Right. Yeah, yeah. And babies, children, toddlers, boys and girls, they cry the same amount. But at some point. Yeah. You tell the boys not to cry. Yeah, because yeah. you start off as a baby and you cry for communication. You tr you yes. cry to tell, I'm hungry, I'm dirty, I'm tired, you know, to communicate your needs. And then as you kind of grow up, you cry to express emotion and pain. And because you have the words, you don't have to cry. But mm -hmm. have you have you given your son any messages about crying or do you recall doing that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What did you tell and him? That it's okay and that it is mm -hmm. normal and it's natural and it's, it's good to have to show your emotions, to let your mm -hmm. emotions out. I've seen Grayson cry, um, you know, in recent years when things really get to him. Frustration. Um, it, frustration. Um, just, anger. I've, I've seen that. And, um, you know, I just take him and hold him and we talk about it, but mm -hmm. I'm a little different. You are, a you little are different. different. I I'm different because I remember when uh, Boogie was playing soccer 
there was this kid on the team. Every time he tripped, fell down, he would cry. Mm-hmm. Like he, he cried over everything. And I'm like, I don't want that to be my kid. So I told my son, do not cry on this soccer field unless I see bone poking out of your skin. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is what I told him. Um, mm-hmm. And I I don't think that message was just because he was a boy. I think I would have told my daughter that if somebody, because you know you're gonna you're gonna fall down and sock. You don't eat right. tears every single time. Right. I think right. you 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 need a better way of expressing your frustration. But um, with regard to showing emotions, I've I've always encouraged my son um, to to show his emotions. Now the thing about telling boys not to cry is then. They, they can't show their frustration. They can't show sadness. They can't mm-hmm, show mm-hmm. pain. So then what becomes the emotion that they're okay to show? Anger. Mm. And at that point, they're not showing anger with tears. They might be showing anger exactly. with violence. Exactly. Exactly. You know, um, damn, that's deep candy. Um, you know, I think of, um, my husband and I've seen him cry. Um, it's not that it happens frequently, but when something hits him, he, he will, and he can, um, on December 15th, I'm going to cry right now. Our cat Lacey passed away. And I inherited Lacey when Rick and I met, but he had her since she was, you know, the size of a little tiny kitten in the palm of his hand. Um, And she came to us when she was about three and we had her for, she was 16 years old. See, I have tissue. And um, we all cried. Everybody in the house was crying. And Rick was crying openly and saying, I didn't know I would feel this much, that it would be this great. And I'm like, sweetie, it's, you know, of course, you raised this little kitten. Um, She's been a part of our lives, a part of your lives, sleeping on your lap, on your, on your desk, playing with your mouse, all of these things for all of these years. Um, and I just, we knew it was coming. We knew that she was getting there. She was old. She was an old cat, but she was our cat. And, um, he just didn't expect it to hit him quite the way it did. Was he apologizing for the tears or was he surprised they were coming? Was he embarrassed or what was, he, what was he was emotion? not apologizing. He mm-hmm. didn't apologize. He was just surprised okay. that there was so much, so right. much of that. Right. Right. He, you know, he didn't realize. And, you know, I told him, this is why I waited so long before I got another animal. You know, yeah. um, I had a, a dog, Alex, um, a black lab, and she passed when I was pregnant with Maya. And the gut wrenching sobs, Maxine and I, like, it was just awful. And I thought, I don't want to do this again because it breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, now I have Lacey and then we have Jax and I'm happy for my fur babies, but it also scares the hell out of me because I know there's going to be an end point and I'm going to feel that loss. So I, I knew that, but I think he was surprised by how deeply he felt. Right. Yeah. You know, of course I'm the therapist. I'm like, sweetie, of course you're going to cry. It's okay to cry. Mm Mm-hmm. So um, just in preparation for this, I did some research on crying. And first of all, um, it, it serves many purposes. The tears lubricate your eyes and um, prevent stuff from getting into your eyes. But guess what? It also relieves stress hormones. Mm. The tears contain stress hormones. 
Wow. So what do stress hormones do? They uh, increase your sympathetic nervous system. So that increases your blood pressure, increases your heart rate, and you're getting that stuff out. But then they also produce oxytocin, which is a feel-good hormone, Mm -hmm. and endorphin, which is kind of like an anti-pain type of thing. So you cry when you get hurt, but there's a release of endorphins to take away the pain. So you're releasing the stress hormone. You're Uh physically shedding it. Right. And you've got this. Producing. Yeah. The endorphins to help make you feel good. Yeah. And I think that reminds me of when people say, I just need a good cry. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. and I think women are much more in tune to that because they mm-hmm. know they got to get that, they got to get it up and out of them. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to feel better. The situation might not change. There's still going right. to be sadness or anger or hurt. But having unloaded that makes them feel ba- better, makes us, everybody feel better. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, for me, this this week, when did I cry? Of course, you know, those videos when Mm. a soldier is coming home and then they go to school, the kid's in an assembly, and then the kid goes running up. Uh, There's one kid where dad rings the doorbell and the son said, Daddy, Daddy, I missed you. I missed you, Daddy. And he wraps his legs around his father. Um, But you know what? This weekend or this whole week, I've been off of work. And I have been in this kind of mental state of gratitude and just reframing. And um, I was just thinking about how I have a job where I can take a week off. I have a job where um, I have enough money so I can do the things I want. I can leave my house early to go take mommy to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and I can interpret whatever the doctor says. And I, I was just like, look how blessed I am. I was just kind of overwhelmed with how peaceful my life is, how I'm in this kind of state of like homeostasis. There's nothing Mm -hmm. rocking the boat. There's nothing in the back of my head. There's nothing pressing on me. And I was just like kind of teary eyed, just thinking about how happy I am. And it's not like this, uh, you know, but it's just this kind of Mm -hmm. evenness, Mm -hmm. this steadiness. And that made me happy. I wasn't bawling about it, but I was like, look at you. Look at you. Look at everything you have. So that's what caused me to cry this week. Yeah. I want to I wanna, um, talk a little bit about mommy crying. So you shared about daddy crying, a moment mm-hmm. that you will never forget. There was mm-hmm. a moment um, that I had with our mother where she cried that I will never forget. Um, and mommy doesn't cry a lot. No, she doesn't. She does not. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is after our our mother lost her mother when she was a little girl. Mm-hmm. She she had her father up until what was it? She was 19, forty. She 80, was 40, 81? Mm-hmm. 1981. Yeah. And she and I were in the kitchen at our previous house and she started to cry. I I think I was the only one home. Mm-hmm. And she started bawling and I'm like wait first what's, what's going happening on? to my mother right I I have not seen this and she kept saying and I'm gonna cry again freaking frack candy um she was saying that she was an orphan and mm-hmm. she she doesn't have a mother she doesn't have a father and she's an orphan and our mother was sobbing in the kitchen and all I could do was hold her and tell her, but she has us. And mm-hmm. I was sobbing because I saw my mother in pain. Right. So sometimes it's not your pain that you're crying about, yeah. but you're witnessing the pain of others. 
and it, it gets you right there. And um, that's a moment that I'll never forget. Like when, when you see a parent break like that, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. But at the same time, it's really good to know that they have that capacity and that it's okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I remember, I think probably one of the hardest cries of my life and you were there. And this is when I was going through all sorts of stuff with my ex-husband. And I think I dropped off Maxine from school and I called you sobbing in the car. Mm -hmm. And you came, you, you just dropped what you were doing and you came over and you sent friends over. I couldn't get there in time, but I had a friend who lived close yes. by and she didn't really know you, but I sent her yeah. to your house to kind of stand in the gap before I got there. Yeah. And um, she was holding my, and she was just like thrown into that situation. Mm -hmm. But then when I think about the fact that I have friends who can step in for me. Right. Again, that is gratefulness. That's sisterhood right there. And yeah. so many people don't have that. So many people don't have people they can call to stand in the gap, to be the mother, to be the sister, to be the friend. But I'm grateful for those friendships that I have. I'm yeah. grateful for every single person in my circle of support who can stand in for me. And those yeah. same people, when I was going through my divorce, they stood in for me too. Yeah. And I think there is something, as I remember that cry like it was yesterday because I was physically trying to bur burst through my skin. Um, it, it was racking your body. Yeah. 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 And I, um, I remember it as like the most like crazy making cry. And mm -hmm. I can't tell you that I felt better mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah. it was such a horrendous situation. But I know that I had to release it. Mm -hmm. And it was it was very, very physical. I had to release all of that in order to pull it together. Because later that morning, Maxine had an assembly at school and I had to be there dressed and ready to go and, you know, cheering on my daughter. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that that's a cry that um, that I'll never forget. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about happy tears mm. and what that looks yeah. like. Yeah. And these are some of the most precious tears you can shed. Like, yes. like Candy, you thinking about all that you have to be grateful mm -hmm. for. And I also, I'm thinking, okay, so men are taught not to cry. Mm -hmm. Happy or sad, right? right? So they don't have that outlet. But I'm here to say that men should embrace that emotion and, and share it. Mm -hmm. um, and remember, we have a father who, if daddy laughed, Oh, if he yeah. smiled hard, tears would start rolling down his face. And my daughter, Yaya, is the same. Like, the minute she starts to laugh, yes. it's just like tears down her face. Yes. She got so, that straight from daddy. And I do the same thing. And mm -hmm. it's just, just the laughter and the tears. That I, I mean, my gosh, that feels so good. Mm -hmm. um, Rick has shared to me the day that we got married, when he saw me coming down, how he cried. He was he was tearful in our ceremony. Um, and then I'm thinking of Maya. The first time she had happy tears, Maya is she, like when she was little, she was very emotional, good, bad, sad, mm -hmm. happy. Um, and you sent her a pair of tennis shoes that lit up. They were twinkle toes. Twinkle Toes. By Skechers. <laughs> By, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Twinkle Toes. And she opened this box and she started crying. And I'm like, and I hadn't seen that level of happy tears for her, mm -hmm. from her. And she's like, mommy, they're happy tears. Um, 
And I've, you know, throughout her childhood, it was a beautiful thing to watch when she was so overcome with happiness and gratitude and it just, you know, her blessings that mm -hmm. she cried at our wedding. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wedding. There's that picture of mommy could like consoling her. Or what, yes. Yeah. And people mm -hmm. might have thought that she was sad, but she was just so overcome with happiness mm -hmm. that she, she just couldn't, she couldn't, you know, contain it. And I think, you know, how beautiful that is for children. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't have like these, these ideas, what society tells them how to behave, what to do, what not to do. They just express it. It just comes out. Mm -hmm. It's not until we get older that people put all of these expectations on us and our, and on our emotions. Mm -hmm. that then creates this, you know, this, this quandary, like, or the difficulty in shedding tears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about her brothers? When was the last about, time you saw them cry? Uh, when was the last brothers? time you saw? Uh-huh. Yeah. I think Shoot. Rupi, our older brother, is forced to be stoic because he's kind of the older one and he needs to keep it together so we don't lose it. The first time I saw that was when daddy died. For sure. But, um, but uh, the last time I saw Rupi cry was when his son was having surgery, when our nephew was having surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Because there was so much kind of unknown mm -hmm. and fear surrounding that. And that broke my heart because the last time I saw him cry was when daddy died. So I knew he was terrified. Yeah. Yeah. No, our brothers definitely hold it together. And I think our brothers hold it together for us. Right, right. Like when we're in a place where it's not good. Right. And it might, it's not good for them either. Mm -hmm. But they, between Rupi and Steve, uh -huh. they are there to comfort us. Right. For, right. First, they're older, right? Uh -huh. And then they're yeah. men, right? And so they 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 definitely step in to take care of mm. us. I Steve cries. I've Steve seen Steve. Does. Uh huh. Steve. Mm -hmm. Steve is 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 the brother we have who acts like he doesn't care, but he's the most <laughs> compassion compassionate, most empathy, most sentimental person you ever want to meet. Yeah. He's also an artist that just mm -hmm. add, kind of adds to yeah. that sort of... Yeah, the mystique. The mystique mm -hmm. of Uncle Steve. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, when Mommy was sick a couple years ago, mm -hmm. that was really hard. Of course, we were all frightened. Mm -hmm. We were so scared. And oh, yes. We, oh, I remember your tears then. Yes, I, that, I just had a flashback. Yeah. To, I, it was after we spoke with the surgeon and we were in the waiting room. And, and then it was just it kind you of, and I. And I was just in this room and it was just like the thought of losing our mother, of how sick she was. And my body, it, it was just kind of like coming from my soul. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, um... I remember in that time when she was so sick and we didn't know what was going to happen. I reflected back on her tears when she was sh saying that she's an mm -hmm. orphan, because now I'm thinking we're all going to be orphans. Like I, I was, oh, I was, I was remembering that from, from decades prior yeah. and now feeling like we we're in that going to be in that position. I'm so scared of losing our mother. I, I'm so scared. I'm going to be just beside myself. I just, I just cannot even, I know it's going to happen at some point, but I mm -hmm. cannot even. Yeah. There are going to be a lot of tears. We're going to need a lot, yeah. lot of tissue, a lot of people yeah. around us. Yeah. Yeah. So. What I mean, what's what's the action from this? You know, we, so we've I, raised we've raised these kids to be in touch with their emotions. Mm -hmm. My son, uh, my son being raised around women, raised by a woman. He's highly emotionally intelligent and yeah. Boogie is 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 in touch. Boogie can cry and he's not embarrassed about it. And he, 
he doesn't really care. Um, but what's, what's the action? I mean, I'm done raising the kids, but I think, you know, for the listeners, like, I don't think you should apologize for your emotions, apologize for your fear. If you have kids, grandkids, take away those toxic messages to man up, Mm -hmm. to shake it off, Mm -hmm. um, to embrace, fully embrace your child and all, all that comes with it. I mean, from a therapeutic standpoint, what do you think? So, so I've shared this many times with clients, um, with parents, Mm -hmm. um, and then with, with, with clients when they're old enough to understand as a parent, we are so, um, like ready to teach our children how to, you know, how to, how to, how to walk, right? We help them walk. We teach them how to use a spoon when they're sitting to, to first eat their solids on their own. We are teaching them all of these things, but never are we teaching them about their emotions. They just know. And at that point, it's like happy or sad or mad, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But we don't really tell them at these young ages, what these things can feel like in their body and how they can release it um, and express it in a healthy way. And we need to teach our children about these emotions. You know, we need to label it for them so they have an understanding of what that is. And we need to talk to them about the fact that tears releases stress hormones, but also releases um, those feel good hormones Mm -hmm. as well. So they have a better understanding. So I think the action, the takeaway is to talk to, honestly, the the little kids and Mm -hmm. teach them like we would about how to read or ride a bike. Mm -hmm. But we can start educating our grown kids and the adults and say, you know, hey, did you realize that this happens when you do this? Mm -hmm. And to to give those those adults who might not have had the the freedom, the liberty to truly express themselves the okay um, to do that now and to tell them the, the, the physiological benefits of it. Right. Now, we can't talk about crying without talking about excessive crying and depression. Okay. Oh, okay if you okay. find <laughs> if you find yourself crying every day and having this kind of overwhelming sense of sadness, that mm-hmm. is not within the 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 realm Regular of normal. Range. Yeah. Yeah. And you and need no, to no, no. seek care. Right. And then so, of course, go ahead. No, no, no. You're you're absolutely correct. So let's let's differentiate between mm-hmm. the the normal range of crying, which mm-hmm. like I said, I cried three times last week and mm-hmm. you know, um and and then the more problematic challenging aspects of crying like you said if you're crying daily if but then also be mindful of the other symptoms that are coming along with that are are you is there excessive sleep are you overeating are you undereating um do you feel fatigue do you feel irritable you know all of these yes. other symptoms that go along with um you know depression. clinical depression that's a whole other issue Um, So here today, we're not talking about clinical depression. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about the power of tears. Right, right. And then also um, remember that women of a certain age, sometimes your hormones are not what they should be. And there's Mm -hmm, a decrease mm -hmm. and it can cause you to cry for no reason because of those fluctuating hormones that may need regulation and you should seek medical care for that. Right. Right. Okay. But Mm -hmm. it's not to um, pathologize menopause or perimenopause. It's to make sure that you're able to function and, um, you know, and and be stable. I also want to bring up and uh, this is I have to bring it up is um, in child abuse. The number one trigger for abusive injury in early stage in the first two months of life is a baby that's crying. Okay, explain that. Rap, ex- okay, yeah. because uh, you bring a baby home, 
Okay. And the baby is sleeping, sleeping, and then they stop sleeping, and then the baby's crying. You don't know what to do, and uh, you you're trying to feed the baby. The baby's crying. The baby has colic, and parents become extremely frustrated, mm. and then they shake the baby. Ah, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then the abusive trauma happens. That's the number one. That that is a question on the boards. And it is a well-known fact that, that the number one trigger for abuse in the first, you know, in the first few months of six months of life is a baby that is crying and then the ensuing parental frustration. Right. Because they don't know how to interpret it. So what's the action item from that? We need to educate these parents that this is going to be a fact of their life. Yeah, right? it's like, like cry, crying is normal. Crying right. is normal. And, right. and sometimes you do everything that should be done. You feed mm -hmm. the baby, you change the baby, the baby's warm, and the baby's still going to cry. Right. And it's okay to put a crying baby down once all the needs have been met and walk away. Put the baby mm -hmm. in the crib and walk away if you're getting frustrated. Right, right. And I think um, having that conversation with parents... I think is is so important to let them know this and also maybe preemptively to educate them about it, but also to think, let's plan in advance what your coping mechanisms right. are going to be for right. when and if this happens with your child. Right. Are you and your partner, is there a partner in the picture? Can you trade off? Can you say, you take the baby, I got to go for a walk? Um, what are you going to do when you find yourself in that situation. I'm so glad you brought that up uh, because I don't think anybody ever told me that when I was leaving the hospital with three different children. Right. Nobody, nobody told me that. I, I, I hope, I mean, it's been a long time since I had a baby, but I hope that education <laughs> is taking place in the nursery or um, when you bring the baby home, but um, it really should be common knowledge that a baby doesn't hate you because it's crying. You know, it's not it's not a sign that the baby doesn't like you or that you're a bad parent. It's their way of communicating and sometimes they're little nerve they they don't they haven't regulated. They don't know how to right. regulate. So right. um you know some of the things that help babies regulate is skin to skin. Mm -hmm. Feel feeling somebody against their skin. Um just being safe and warm and to know that their needs are being met. The sad yeah. thing about kids who have been abused for a long time is they stop crying because mm -hmm. they have learned that their tears mean nothing. Yeah. And so they don't cry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we, we can't round this out without me, um, bringing that up, but it's, um, it's important information to know. Yeah. For sure. Remind me when I start having grandbabies. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, hopefully I'll be doing that before you, but who knows? Um, okay, so I think, you know, we wanted to talk about this because it is just a natural function of all human mm -hmm. beings. We want to em encourage you to embrace your tears um, we want you to feel that it's okay to express your emotions through tears, happy, sad, angry, whatever. Um, we want to normalize tears for men. So maybe you are a man listening to this, or maybe um, a woman in your life is listening to this. Maybe she can share some of these things with you to say, hey, you know what? I just heard this on Tusoka. <laughs> and I want to tell you, yeah. maybe we can get, we can draw a whole new male audience. Uh, uh, yeah. I want to, I want to um, just share what I learned today, what I heard today. Mm -hmm. And because nobody should be made to feel like they cannot express their feelings, whatever mm -hmm. they are. And we need to create a space where all feelings are accepted and it's safe to express them. Um, so yeah, so thank you for watching me cry this morning. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, a lot of things kind of came back to me that brought up different feelings. 
Um, and I think this is, this is a worthwhile conversation for us to have here, but for also for people to have, you know, with their families, with their children and their partners and so on and so forth. Exactly. So, um, you know, if you have ever been overcome with emotion, if you have felt happiness and sadness and water, I want to fall out of your face. Mm -hmm. um, remember, the ladies at Tusoka, we can relate, okay? We absolutely can. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. So glad to have you with us. Please, please, please like, follow, rate Tusoka Podcast. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Candy, how do folks reach us if they're looking to get a hold of us? Well, they can find us on Instagram. It's the number two and then the words sisters of a certain age on Insta. You can reach us on um, email to soca podcast at gmail.com. And then you can follow us on YouTube. And if you follow us on YouTube, you get to see what we look like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And we will catch you the next time on Tusoka. Bye. Bye. No Longer Network.